Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got my friend on the line. I call him Patrick Courage because I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. Patrick, are you there? And how do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> I am, yeah, this is, my name is Patrick Menibun. Menibun. Menibun, but it is the Courage Patrick. The Courage Patrick. Dun, dun, dun. That makes it easy for you. See, I knew that not because I'm psychic, but I knew it because you and I had talked before and we know that you yeah. talk about courage. Yes, I do. I am, you know, what I call an impact strategist, an impact speaker, and specifically on the topic of courage. Okay, and you are here in Minneapolis. I'm in Minneapolis, and we have not met in person, though, have we? Not yet. Well, it is, it is very possible that our path may have crossed, but <laughs> who did? Now, I, never, I didn't know. Are you married and got kids and things like that? I got two kids, a boy and a girl. A, a, a boy that is 20, a girl about to turn 17. I am not married. I was, but life happened, so. It does. Yeah. <laughs> but you got a boy and a girl, so you get a little little. A little bit of that, a little bit of this. It's different, yes? Yeah, and I think it's pretty good enough. So, <laughs> yeah. It's well, like we talked about before, it doesn't matter. You get to make the choice whether it's good or not. You, you, you still get to make the choice. That's, that's one of the things that is in our absolute power. I've noticed that even like um, the, the analogy or example I use is like, even with like a stub my toe on the corner of the bedpost or something, and it hurts, you can still laugh. Yes, yes. Um, I don't remember, I think it was Pastor Chuck Swindoll who basically said that life is 10% what happened to you. And you know, 90% how you respond to it. Exactly. So it applies in about every situation, the only a little piece that probably we don't control. Yeah, because that situation, if you uh, stub your toe or you drop a dish and it breaks, there's nothing you could do about it. It's already oh. done, so you just part of the deal, right? It, it, it is, <laughs> you know, because um, how you respond to it will will determine how the rest of your night, the rest of your day, the rest of a lot of other things start to fall in place. So. Yeah, so you are a speaker. You speak to people about the topic of courage. And so to me, I think I've heard it before, like courage is facing the fear and doing it anyways, right? So you're afraid, but you go through and be brave. It's, it's, it's essentially that, but I define courage as that innate ferocious swearing you know you know um power that is already in us we were all born with courage like when we were born we had the highest self-esteem picture a little kid a little kid has no fear no fear at all no you know self-esteem issues the kid can go wherever he or she wants, doesn't care what anybody thinks, because we were born with so much self-esteem. And then somewhere down the line, somebody started to tell us, you can't do this, you can't do that. Don't put your hands on the stove. Well, isn't it, isn't it also situations like that happen where a little kid has never touched the stove before, so doesn't know any better? Exactly. They learn it and then they get scared. Correct. Correct. But in, in a lot of cases, though, we were told by our parents, some relatives, some coach, some teacher, don't do this. Ah, that's not you. That's. And then somewhere along the line, that courage within us got trapped. It got stuck. And it kept there. It kept being in there and just wanting to be loosed, to be, you know, you know, unleashed. 
but as we grow up, you know, you know, insecurity starts to creep in. Isn't it? It's still there, though, isn't it? Like if you get cornered, all of a sudden you need to fend for your life, then the courage Correct. comes out and says, I got to do what I got to do. Correct. It, it is amazing that you mentioned that because the, the, when our you know, initial brain, our original brain, focus on three things. Number one, food. <laughs> you know, number two, safety. Number three, sex. Those were the only thing original brain focus on. But when there was some kind of noise in the bushes, it tells you, oh, you are, you are going to be a food or there is food. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's how we normally respond. But then that instinct is still there, even though now we have the part of our brain that can think that is much more conscious and the other part of the brain that com controls, you know, emotions. But the courage, the courage is still there. It's just that different kind of situation evoke different kind of courage. But my program is mostly focused on um, self-responsibility and self-mastery. Get what is it's more clear on the mastery. What is the self mastery part? The thing here, Brad, is if you don't like one, if you cannot master yourself, what on earth can you master? Oh, you mean it, you mean like uh, self control, self discipline, self control, um, self discipline, self awareness, okay. self. Again, it goes back to how we respond, how we respond to the 10% of the things that will happen to us. Yeah. And that's essentially what self-mastery is. And then a part of our response lead us to what? Self-responsibility, you know, self-ownership. So in a situation where you might be cornered and there might be, you might be attacked, you got to have the discernment. Should I attack back or should I maybe talk my way out of this as opposed to starting problems? That's a great point. Yeah. Even, even apart from attacking back, <laughs> there is a law against retaliation. Yes. <laughs> if, if you retaliate, you are essentially breaking the law. So even, even whether you want to naturally do it or control yourself, there's a law against it. So, but yeah, um, for instance, I was born a guy who stutters. I've always thought, I, I talked to my mom. She said the first time she observed that I stutter was age eight, right around there. And for a long time in my life, I allowed it to define me. I allowed it to define who I was. I allowed it to define what kind of you know, you know, people I allow in my, you know, you know, inner circle, my connections, relationships. You in high school, you can't even approach the girl because you're afraid, you know, she's going to focus on your stuttering. Yes. And and for a lot, a long time, again, I allow it to define me. It was always the elephant in the room, you know. And then you. I quickly came to the realization that again, is not what happened to you. You know, it, it is said that about 50 to 60 percent of people who stutter has a relative or close connection that stutter, and that was true in my case. But that does not that does not um, excuse me from owning my response to it yeah and part of my response to it was oh really you think public speaking is what a lot of people are afraid of okay i'm going to challenge it i was just gonna say that's interesting that you have that topic of courage because with the stutter and you're going to be a public speaker someone would say don't do that 
but Correct. you face the fear and do it anyways. That's courageous. So I applaud you. And, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it is within us. It, it is within this sense, highly courageous because again, when we so long allow things to define us, it, oh, is Patrick the guy who started us? In fact, I even named my business Stutter Us Courage. Yeah. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't think that was a great idea. <laughs> Why not? But, you, well, you get, def you, know, you get defined or you allow yourself to be defined by stuttering. And when I in initially started my business, I thought it was an easy way to just lay everything out in the open. But now that I think about it, I am perpetuating being defined by stuttering, which I have chosen, again, we'll go back to choice. That's not what I want. Well, you can or take that's not it what from, I want anymore. You can look at it from two different points. From a marketing aspect, it identifies you as someone unique. True. As far as the speaker. But if it's something you don't want in your life anymore, it's probably not a good idea to call yourself that. You know, interestingly, um, for instance, there is somebody who's been working as a, you know, a budget manager or a business analyst in the past. You get, get to a point where you decide, hey, I don't think, even though it is what I've done before, well, I don't think I want to be identified by that. And even from a mental standpoint, from your, you know, from the position, you know, from your, from your subconscious mind, you, you, you know, that mind doesn't even know the difference between, you know, you know, if that's what you want or you don't want it. It just say, well, I will keep replaying the card. I will keep replaying the song. You. We have to interrupt that somehow, and it is honestly a part of my goal. But yeah, and it is, uh, you it can is also what it is. you can also just like accept it for what it is and just move forward. Like there's a magician friend of mine in North Carolina, and he is handicapped in a wheelchair. Um, he's got some physical issues where he can't get out of the wheelchair, and he does magic. And right. he's got a nonprofit organization he put together called The Vanishing Wheelchair because he did magic for these kids. And the, the father of the kid says, so what'd you think of the magic? What'd you think of the, the magic the guy in the wheelchair did? And the kid says, what wheelchair? Nice. Because nice. he didn't even see the wheelchair. He just saw the magic. Nice. And, so, and, and, and that, is, that is exactly the, the, the point that I, that I present in my programs it is still about your personal response to it it is still about how you treat it people will treat you based on what you tolerate in your own life if you tolerate being oh poor me sorry for me that's what you get remembered for that's that's what you'll be remembered for. So you're the but, situation where you walk into the room, you hit the stage, you start talking to people about courage and you're stuttering, but people all, all of a sudden they go, that's not even relevant. I loved his message on courage. That's the point. And that's the point in each of us lives, Brad. Each of us have a story. And even from a public speaking standpoint, it, it doesn't even matter if it's public speaking. The way you, when you enter a room, when you show up, people, you know, evaluate you for a lot of things that have nothing to do with public speaking or um, public speaking or, or what, you know, ever it is. But within the first, you know, pretty much half of meaning or to one minute or even two minutes, they start to see substance, which we control and it is our ownership of those substance that make people to say okay yeah it, 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 where is the wheelchair where is the starter i didn't notice it 
So when you walk in the room with confidence and people see you and there's, there's that, that energy, when you hit the stage, they don't even notice the stuff. It's all part of self-mastery where you look in at your confidence. Oh. You, you that makes a lot more sense now, the mastery part. Correct. Self-awareness. You, you, you walk in the room and you try to make it all about you. It will become all about you. Mm -hmm. so. so what kind of group, what type of groups is it that you speak for? That's a great question. I love young adults a lot. In between the ages of um, 16 to 24, but let's say 16 to 26, mm -hmm. that group, in my opinion, is the bare rock foundation that influences a lot of stuff in our society mm -hmm. because they are going through a lot of different phases trying to get to know themselves, going yeah. in some transition you know, from high school into probably college if they decide to go to college. But there is a lot of transition getting to know themselves, being influenced by this you know, you know, you know, you know, informational age that we have where everybody can reach out to you yeah. from, your, from your phone. At that and age, they, I guess they're kind of, they're, they're, at that age, they're still molding, but they're starting to get concrete beliefs. Good way to say it. They are not set in stone, but they're set in maybe some watery clay that is still being molded. You haven't and, put them in the oven yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's a good point. And I think that's, that's where we as society you know, have our responsibility to emphasize personal responsibility. So with that because age group, is there any specific, um, like, uh, I would say industry or category, like athletes versus artists versus business entrepreneurs? Any special good question? Good, 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 good question. I haven't um, gone down to specifics, but I um, have talked to more you know, you know, um, kids in college going into high, I mean, going from high school to college or being at the point where they consider themselves sort of late bloomers in that group because mm -hmm. there is, there is this kid who probably 16 year old who did not, you know, you know, this kid was probably not, not a star in the in, in you know high school, mm -hmm. and he's slow of learning, or for some reason he's slower than a, a lot of his peers, and he feel left behind. He, 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 you know, he or she feels that they are not, you know, equal to everybody, yeah. everybody else, and. But that's what society tells us that, well, you are in a special situation. Whereas we are just at different seasons of our life on how yeah. we conceptualize things. I, I uh, was just, what came to my mind is the way that the school system teaches people, it puts everybody in certain grades. So you're in fifth grade, you do this. If you're in ninth sure. grade, you do this. But there's different types of people that learn different ways. Like some people can, they learn musically, some people learn physically, some people learn cerebrally, they, they learn different yes. ways. Yes. yes. It, it, is, it, 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 is, it is interesting you mentioned that because part of my program, one of the things I use in my program is mind mapping. Mm -hmm. When you see how the mind works, the mind doesn't go from A to B to right. C to D. That's not how the mind works. The mind like, oh, I'm at, the mind that, oh, I'm at A. And I see a connection between A and Z. Let's go to Z. That's, that's how the mind works. It, it, it takes what it already has in storage and connect it with something new. Yeah. That connection is not linear. And exactly. when, you, when, you, when you make it to learn linearly, we kind of confining them, we kind of restricting them. 
go back again to the two-year-old kid, the one-year-old kid. They could, you know, even five-year-old, the kids could sit and imagine a whole world of their own. Yeah. And then somebody would say, well, you are crazy. No, that we are crazy because we stopped being kids to, 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 to a large extent. You know, we, we pretty much um, start for our own imagination and creativity. Yeah. And that's, that's where that courage to even ask yourself, is what I'm believing mine or somebody imposed upon me and, and, and I can't shake it? Is the belief system that I'm carrying my own? Do I really believe what I'm believing? So like you, if you're sitting around somewhere, you hear some good music, so you feel like getting up to dance, but people will look at you and see you and laugh. Yes. You got the courage to do it. And the, and the interesting point, Brad, is most of those same people wish that they could be dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but because we so much try to fit in the mode, in the image of somebody else, or in the, in the image of some laws, rules, guidelines that yeah, somebody the way else it's created. The way it's supposed to be, yeah. The way it's supposed to be. And the question is, who defines that? The person before you. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. It, it, you know, I just learned that when we sneeze, just like you just did, when we sneeze and we say, <laughs> bless you, I heard it was something the priest did back in the days of plague and stuff like that. When people sneeze, it was the way they perceive it as you. I heard that you too, know, yeah. Sneezing out some evil spirit or something like that. And they say, bless you. And guess what? We say it today. Yeah. It, it has no connection to, it's just, oh, well, bless you. I find that often in some words that people use, like these days when people record things, they say they film it. There's no film. <laughs> no, right? no film. Or they're saying, true. I'm going That's to true. tape it. And there's no tape. Yes. So yeah. people get in, it's just getting stuck that old way and they so, go forever correct. and ever and ever. And, and that's what I'm, you know, I indicate that courage is not, it's, it's easy to run on the street and pull that kid out of the road when the car is coming. That's another form of courage. The, the courage of them, the, the, you know, those guys who put their life on the line you know, in terms of war, go, go to war. That takes a whole different set of courage. But there is a different set of courage to even stand up to what you believe, to even stand up to what your friends tell you to believe. Or oh, sure. Yeah, to, like to, if to you're even in stand a group. up to what, correct, to, to even say, hey, you know, I don't feel like doing this. So I to break through the peer pressure. It, it takes a lot of courage and, uh, and personal responsibility. So it, it is the reason why I focus on self mastery and personal responsibility, because in the end is what do you want to be remembered for? So do you have any like tips or techniques to be able for a person to be able to be more courageous? I know that uh, Tony Robbins used to do some things with, um, with uh, anchors. You do physical yes, anchors. I re there was I a thing that I used to do about confidence and I would squeeze my thumb like this. I'd take my th finger and I'd squeeze my thumb whenever I felt confident. So whenever I needed to feel confident, I would squeeze my thumb and I was practicing this. I remember I was in a situation where I wanted to feel more confident. I did that and it was so powerful. Yeah. I just lost my train of thought as soon as I did it. Just, just. So do you have some little tricks like that that you can share that uh, help people I, be courageous? It's, it's interesting. I'm you know, originally from a country in Liberia, West Africa. Hmm? And back in Africa, when we shake hands, we shake hands and we snap our finger at the end. So you shake somebody's hand and then you snap your finger. And I thought, hmm, 
since I normally shake my hand, shake hand with my right hand, I will transfer that snap the fingers to my left because I don't usually do it with my left. And that's how I stimulate my stutterous courage. I give my courage a name. So in this case, that's how my business is called stutterous courage. So you know, I transfer it to my left hand and when I feel the need to be courageous, I'm like, okay, Patrick, let's go. Let's do it. Up. So it is not normally something that I do with my left hand, but it's like some, some evil spirit. Oh, it's not evil spirit. <laughs> like this spirit comes all over you and says, let's do it. But it's, it's a pattern interrupt. Because you don't normally the rope. Snap your finger, your left, you normally stop with your right, and it's different. Correct, correct. It, it, that is exactly what it is. And there is this five second rule by what, what, what her name? Um, Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins got this five second rule. You count down five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and just go because so. Oh, hey, that is Brad, and I want to talk to Brad. Oh, I wonder what he would think about me. I wonder I'm wearing the right shirt. I wonder I'm going to impress him. Just count down five, four, three, two, one, and hey, Brad, I am Patrick. And as long as you're standing there, something is about to start. The conversation will roll, conversation will flow. But it, 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 again, it comes down to each person figuring out how to interrupt that pattern of fear that your mind, again, going back, your mind previously did three things to protect you, to find your food, and, you know, sex. So there is still that primitive part of our brain that still exists. That say, oh, going to introduce herself to Brad? No, that's not what we're comfortable with. So you, 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 you know, you essentially have five seconds before your mind takes over the function of everything that's supposed to normally happen. So if your mouth is supposed to normally speak, you got about five seconds before your mind tell your mouth, don't say anything. So that's oh, something you could mind. do. You could do it on a yes. small level, kind of like uh, jumping off a cliff into the lake. You got to go ready, set. Ready, set. Down. So maybe if you start just jumping off the curb into the street, it's a little jump. You go five, four, jump. three, two, one. That's easy. And then Correct. you do it bigger and bigger, and it gets stronger. So it's a little technique for strengthening up that courage. <laughs> and that's where my my. <laughs> You know, I have a system called ARM. Arm. You become, you know, aware. You, the first one is becoming aware of that. You know, the impact of the, you know, you know, insecurity because it is all insecurity. Sure, it's insecurity of whatever form. How we came to it, it doesn't matter. It's insecurity. If you even feel that you much better than everybody, there's still some kind of insecurity there involved. If you feel, oh, I'm not good enough, there is still insecurity. So, so be aware of that. Become, yeah, the consequences, they, you know, become aware. Mm -hmm. Then we, so, you know, in my case, I saw the insecurity of stuttering that, that you know, stuttering brought. Okay. And I had to come to a point where I counted the cost of that insecurity. Like, gosh, if I wasn't so insecure because of my stuttering, I could have, you know, done this presentation. And if I had done this presentation, who know where it, you know, it would have led. That's the A. Okay. The next one is the arrow. You got to now now you know what the insecurity is. we have to, to, you know we take that and turn it into what we want we, you know we transform it into the, the possibilities mm -hmm. 
you know, transform it into where we want to go, what we want to do with it. So what does the R stand what for? And come back to it, redefine. Sure. That, that, that's what it, 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 then the M, that's what move. move so you become. Or motivation. Well, motion. it's interesting you ask because, right, on a move, we got motivation, we got, yes, right, on a move, we got motivation, we got, you know, model mm -hmm. where we, 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 take something and model it, then we manage the process and repeat, you know, so you become aware, then you, you, you know, you, you, I, I can't tell you why, I'm so stuck. Is, it, is the realization? Well, essentially that's what it is, but the, the, the but I just want to tell you the, the, the word that, that I use, redefined. Redefined, there it is. <laughs> oh, it took me years to even say that. <laughs> so it, it is, you know, you know, you become aware, then you, 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 you know, you, know you, 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 you become aware of the insecurity, now you, you take it, you know, you, Kind of a structure into what you want. Then it is time to, to move and do something with it. It's also kind of like shifting of a paradigm, kind of thing. Paradigm is the word. Paradigm is actually the word. That's each and everything we do in the self improvement life is actually shifting a paradigm in mm -hmm. different shapes and forms. Well, like perspective. Perspective. All these P, P's coming out now, the point of view. <laughs> Respect, you know, it, it, it's like mindsets. Um, like, 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 they say, um, you know, you, you, you get more of, of what you focus on. So yeah, that's what even Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa said, do not invite me to an you know, anti-war writing because you get more of what you focus on. I so, totally get that. That's uh, the situation that happened with the war on drugs. You have a war when you war fight, on drugs, you have a fight. All those things still perpetuate because it was anti-something. Yeah. It, it, is, it is easy to, it is easy to be against something. But it, 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 it is much harder to take a stand for something. And, and in my case, I am taking a stand for personal responsibility and self mastery. It doesn't matter what the ten percent is. The ten percent can be like we, you know, have currently, you know, in our society, all the issues. Almost everything goes to race. It's an easy way out. Everything, you know, it, you know, it's being racialized. It's an easy way out. And personal responsibility is way of your race and all the easy thing of blaming everybody else. It's right down here. So it yeah. always get activated. And personal responsibility never gets activated because it's, it's still <laughs> sit, sitting here waiting for somebody to say, hey, I'm here. Is anybody going to ask me? It's my turn. <laughs> so, Patrick, I don't remember. Did you have a book? No, not yet. You're, you're I, in the process. I am writing a book, and it, it, it was the, the book I'm writing is more about self belief. Is you know, you know, you know, overrated. Self, what is overrated? Um, self belief. Okay. You mean like believing in yourself, confidence? Not, not necessarily that, but the whole motivational industry has told us that it's all about self-belief. It's all about self-belief. And, and I 
think we spend all our life trying to build up the self-belief, but it is one of those things that can easily be demolished like this. Yeah. So, so people spend their time, making, you know, doing affirmations, which is great. But because self-belief is so easy to, to damage, it, it evaporates very quickly. My goal is, no, focus on the habit of courage, mastering the habit of courage, not self-belief. Because self-belief will evaporate. Self-belief is a moving target. Mm -hmm. You can catch it. Self-belief, you know, fluctuates like, you know, in a wind. You, you cannot contain it. So what do you do? You focus on courage. And right. in the process, I tell my own story. How I went from a guy who stutters and still stutter by the way what she saw to somebody who almost qualified for the world championship of public speaking. So to have the courage to do it. Got to have the courage. That's why it comes down to. Because if, if you don't swing the bat, you can't hit the ball, right? You, 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 you got to swing. Out of the ball is going to hit the bat or the bat is going to hit the ball. But <laughs> there's something that's going to work out. So, Patrick, I don't like to do these too long for people because I want them to be able to digest it all. But um, how does someone get a hold of you if they want to contact you to speak at their upcoming event? Do you have a... A website, I assume? Yes, I do. I do have a website. My website is patrickmenabon.com. And it's Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Menabon is M-E-N-I-B-O-O-N.com. And I can be reached from on Twitter. You know, I don't do much there yet. Twitter, Instagram, um, and I have a YouTube channel again, P Patrick Menaboon. Okay, so it's Menaboon spelled like M E N I Boon. It's, it, it is M E N I B O O N. Boon, got it. Menaboon. And, and I speak on courage, you know, self mastery and personal responsibility. Well, I will uh, put that little. Uh, URL link in here and I put this up to YouTube and then I'll propagate it out to the internet and we'll put it out to people that need to see it. Yeah, so. I, I, you know, this, this interview is a, is a, is a very good example of how sometimes you get stuck and stuff happens, but <laughs> how you respond to it. So. Well, that's why I like to do these just like the way they are. You, I'm not, I don't put a bunch of fancy stuff in there. This is no green screen or anything. This is my office. I don't, I don't, I don't like to edit them. I like to see it raw. This is the way Patrick is. That's what you, that's, that's who he is. That's, that, that's what it is. And I appreciate this, Brad, and I hope we can find time again to talk. Yes, and I might as well throw a little plug in there that we are working on a speaker showcase for March. Yes. March 2021. So if anybody hears about that, stay tuned and you can kind of just Google the keyword magic Brad and you'll find me. And if you were to type, I bet if you were to go on the internet and type in magic Brad Expo, you would find the expo. And then yeah. that's going to be in conjunction with the speaker showcase that we're doing. Thank you, sir. This was fun. Okay, we'll do it again. Thank you, Patrick. Have a nice rest of the day. Peace. Thanks. Courage. <laughs>